Living intentionally, what does that mean? There's a lot that's been written about it, about the power of intention, about how we can influence our reality. But what, you know, just at the core, what does that mean? And that's what we're going to explore today. We have, as I'm so excited for this Facebook Live that we have uh, four people stretched out from British Columbia all the way to Austria and uh, talking about this and what they've discovered in their work. And we're all here to answer your questions as well. So if you've got any questions, put them into the comments and we'll get to it. We have with us Martin Laskolnik from Austria, Natalie Blumden thomas is that correct, Natalie? From uh, Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we have an Natalie uh, Yves Marquis from uh, New England and myself, Ravi Tangri from Nova Scotia. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna kick things off. We're each gonna take uh, a, a moment to introduce ourselves and then give one nugget of what we think is really important to live intentionally. And then we're gonna see where the conversation goes from there. And as I said, jot down your comments uh questions in the in the comments below so maybe we'll start off in uh since you're ahead of us in time zones with you martin so what to introduce yourself a bit and what to you is essential to living intentionally yes thank you ravi what what a joy to be here together uh very briefly about myself uh, i've i've been a long a lifelong seeker of my inner peace, uh, flossed it somewhere uh, on the way. No, I believe I had it at the beginning, but then, you know, as it is in childhood and so on, you get conditioned out of it. So I've, I've gone, when I, in my 20s, I've gone to India to study with Tibetan monks, uh, Buddhist philosophy, and uh, I've been a speaker, a trainer, a coach, an entrepreneur. We're, we're doing several things. Uh, we are teaching English to children as a mother tongue method uh, with my meanwhile ex-wife together. And I'm a speaker of, on motivation, self-esteem. That's what it did for the corporate environment. When this is really hit me hard and made me think and pause, and that crisis actually was the biggest gift I ever got. And it led me to a profound state of inner peace actually about three years ago. And so I'm trying to live that and Am I keeping it all the time? Certainly not. Uh, am I finding more and more nuggets of it? Yes, I do. And so with that, I'm already in what does it mean to live intentionally? Uh, I think there is no goal that we reach. I think it's, it's, it's the way. It's a constant process of evolving, a constant process of, of being reevaluating where you are. I don't know whether it's true or not. I've, I've, I've once heard that the Apollo mission that went to the moon, uh, it was on course 3% of the time. And 97% of the time they were readjusting, calculating, correcting, uh, so that they got back on the right course. And Absolutely. I think, I think that, is, that is pretty much what, what we can say about life. Do we get life right? Uh, no. Life happens to us, and, and we are along for the ride. So what I've come to, to embrace more and more in the last years is to allow myself to surrender to the flow of love. And living intentionally means for me that I'm aware of what's going on. Uh, I rather try not to take things too personal. Now, if somebody presses your button uh, of subconscious conditioning, then that's maybe not that easy all the time. Uh, but I'm getting better with it. And so there are, there are two things. One is like I have a deep core belief that life is happening for us and not against us. So there is a, a power, a, a, a the universe, God, the angels, Buddha, nature, Krishna, whatever it is. It's yours, but there's a bigger space of connecting, of uh, connecting the within with the all about, and to be aware of that, living that, being being uh, conscious of that, I think is for me living intentionally, and what is also a huge part for me is um, dealing with all the negative stuff that happened. Uh, so doing some some 
Actually, it's not mental. I would say I call it emotional hygiene. Yeah, getting getting rid of the of the triggers that we have and all that stuff. So these these are two aspects. The so one is really the the positive outlook to things. The other is accepting what is right now there and also releasing it, letting it go, letting it letting it move on and and going back to the flow. So very briefly That's from me. Cool. Uh, now before we move on to Natalie, we've got a comment from Denise. Hi, Denise. So great, great that you connected in, and she's and I'd love to come back to this after we've done our round. We're, we'll come back. I, I'd love to comment on this. She says living intentionally to me means soaking up each moment: the good, the bad, the frustrating, the beautiful, and accepting it for what it is. What is the lesson I can learn in this place? I'm in i'm in right now and and then she says by the way intentionality happens when one whenever one partakes in a world cafe that's how denise and i connected when i was working down <laughs> so i i want to come back to uh to to that, that that first comment about intentionality i think we might all have a bit yeah. say on there and thanks for for popping that in so natalie we'll we'll go to you if you'd introduce yourself and then share a little bit of you know what's your one nugget that you'd like to kick things off with so um, I guess for me, um, I'm a transformational expert. So I help people uh, dig in their brain and I specialize on self-sabotage. So for me, living uh, intentionally is living in, um, in your head, in your heart and in your soul with what it is that you want instead of living with what we don't want. Because unfortunately, 70% of our thoughts are usually negatives. And, and we keep talking to ourselves. Like if we talk to our friends the same way we talk to ourselves, we wouldn't have any friends. So living intentionally is that we set these intentions on paper or we do those vision boards or, or we make the smart goal and we've got these lists. And yet in our head, we keep telling ourselves, I'm so stupid, I'm not worthy. Oh my gosh, I'm so, and, and that's, that's not living intentionally. So living intentionally would be to have everything on paper because you need to have these lists and these goals. And then to start talking to yourself in a way that, that you want to happen because whatever you tell yourself, whenever you, you are thinking of something, your brain is like a personal assistant with a notepad writing down everything that you say. So we get up in the morning, we're like, oh, I look so tired. I'm so stressed out. Oh, it's going to be a gong show today. I think I'm getting fat. So people are like, your personal assistant writes that down. Stressed out. Okay, I can make this happen. I'm going to make them being late today for work. Got this. Check. I'm stressed out or I am tired. Oh, I can keep them awake all night. Perfect. I'll do that. Check. I'm getting fat. Oh, I'll find a chocolate cake or something deep fried for them to eat. Check. So the problem is everything that we tell ourselves our personal assistant in our head, that, that's a powerful thing we have. We all have a brain and our brain will make things happen for us. So we have to be very careful of the orders that we place to ourselves. So living intentionally for me is, is be kind to yourself. Be, tell yourself what you want, not what you don't want. Because your brain, even if you have a good intention saying, I don't want to be stressed. I don't want to be impatient with my kids. I don't want to be broke. Even if you say that, your brain just writes down broke, impatient, and stressed. It doesn't know the difference. If you ask your contractor that renovates your kitchen to paint your kitchen not blue, your contractor do doesn't even know what you want. So living intentionally for me is to constantly tell yourself, what do you want? Okay, it sucks right now. So what do you want instead? And always go to that place to, okay, um, and and what Denise just said, what am I learning here? Because living intentionally is, is to go through the good, the bad, and the like Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> like, just, just keep going. There's no turning back. Like, most people, when there's an obstacle, they're like, huh, oh, too hard. That's not for me anyway. I'm just turn around. Like, you ever seen an infant, like a baby trying to walk for the first time that said, oh, that's too hard. That's not for me. I'm just going to crawl. No, like you, ju you just keep trying and keep going. So we living intentionally is, is understanding that these obstacles that come to us are just designed to make us grow. So I love what Denise commented because that's, that's exactly what it is. What am I learning? Because we're always learning something 
And these negative emotion, anger, fear, hurt, sadness, guilt, whatever happens to us, these powerful emotion, they're just there to put us on our toes. They're like a, a delivery truck who are uh, delivering a message. So you get the parcel and then you let the truck go. You don't need to keep the truck in your driveway and keep piling them in your driveway. You can just let it go. So I guess for me, it's it's really about how we internally talk to ourselves and how, and how eventually you can start trust yourself and and know that you're right and the feeling of knowing that you got this that that you can trust that you will deliver every single time so i guess that's that's my nugget thank you very much and now we are distinguishing between natalie who we just spoke with and natalie a little more anglicized version so natalie if you'd like to uh introduce yourself and share your first nugget for this Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Natalie's rock. <laughs> so, um, well, my passion is to help people reconnect with their inner wisdom. My business is called Wisdom Within. So um, I'm an intuitive energy healer, a hypnotherapist, and a teacher. As a hypnotherapist, I totally resonate with everything Nat Natalie just said. Um, I'm also the founder of the Reiki Release Method, um, and I teach other healers and intuitives um, how to pinpoint and release blocked emotions and limiting beliefs. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, as far as, you know, living um, intentionally, uh, that is, you know, sort of my primary mandate. Um, although I get really psyched about, you know, the mental mastery aspect of living, I would say for me at my core, uh, what's most important to me is my, my connection to the divine. Um, so my daily practice is one where, um, you know, I, I meditate a little bit, I do a little spiritual reading, I journal a lot. Um, and those are all ways for me to have an experience of um, my connection with the divine. And I use that connection with the divine to, um, to basically navigate my life. You know, I believe my intuitive connection and one of the reasons I feel so passionately about helping people reconnect to their own intuition is so they can hear their, their higher wisdom, their higher God self, and so they can know and experience um, the wonder of that connection, that very personal connection um, with the divine. And so how I use that myself in my everyday life and um, again, kind of please know, I don't have this all figured out. I had one successful life as a marketing consultant and design consultant for over 30 years. And I've been in this new business for a couple of years and, you know, still in that mucky mire place of figuring things out and having things um, kind of coalesce. And they're not all coalesced yet. <laughs> so, but living intentionally really helps me get there. And my connection to, to the divine is the way I tune in throughout the day and in the morning and in the evening especially and say to myself, where, where am I, where, when am I feeling joy? That means I'm connected to the divine. When am I feeling fear or angst or worry or anything like that? That tells me that I'm moving, that I'm getting out of alignment with my connection with the divine. Because to me, the divine is all about peace and joy and um, flow and serenity and when I am not in that place it's telling me I'm thinking feeling or doing something that is not in alignment so for me that's a place of time where I can kind of pause and say okay what do I need to think do um, sometimes it's just a matter of getting quiet <laughs> and meditating a little bit and um, so I loved um, Martin's uh, comment about surrendering and um, doing our best to go with the flow. It's also something I'm learning to do. I definitely haven't mastered that. <laughs> but uh, so my connection to the divine is everything for me. That's the way I believe, you know, we all have a, a God self within us. And um, so I'm doing my best to um, explore and experience that as fully as I can. So that's me. And a very recent West Coast swing dancer. West Coast. Yes. Ooh, which I love. Thank you so much for <laughs> to me, Ravi. <laughs> You're very welcome. Okay, so I'm Ravi Tangri, and what my focus is, is purpose. Oh, Honestly, like everything that I uh, do comes from uh, purpose. Uh, when I work with organizations, I do strategic planning with them, but it starts with what's our shared purpose in plain English, not mission, not vision, but why? 
because that's why people get up and get excited. And with individuals, it starts with purpose and, and, and getting in touch with that why, which is a feeling, which for me is a compass. When I make a decision, all I need to go in and say, is this on purpose or not? Boom. And, and that, that's, I don't need to know why that's my decision. Um, and for me, my background is, is a little bit different. It's, 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 it's interesting that Martin went to India and studied there, but I, I'm Indian, but I, I've never lived there. Uh, but my background, I started out as a quantum physicist. And the interesting thing is a lot of what happens with the new spirituality and with uh, the new science is says the same thing that nothing is absolute that there are um, th that our conscious attention changes the result just simply watching an event changes the result and and that an intention can can do that so for me, I, I'm still in many ways a scientist. And a scientist doesn't mean you understand exactly why it happens all the time. It just means if you can do something and produce a result consistently, you can, that scientific method, that A leads to B. So if, if listening to your intuition leads to good outcomes, you can actually track that. And, and you can show that intuition correlates with, with, with good outcomes and so on and so forth. You don't know why Nestle works. That's that may find out. You may not. But that that scientific method. So my nugget, it's it's actually comes back to dance. One of my passions is dance, and the the interesting thing with dance is that we have you have a lead and a follow. Often the male is the man is the lead and the woman is the follow, but it's not absolute, and the lead initiates a move and then the follow usually follows through and 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 does that so the, for the lead that's part of why i love dance it's i'm a creator and i love choreographing instantly in the moment um the thing is though when you're manifesting when you're living intentionally you need to play both roles sometimes you lead sometimes the universe leads okay so when you are leading, that's putting out, this is my intention, this is what I choose, this is what I am creating, and you put that out. And I do that with strategic planning. They, they set out a vision, and they set out a three-year goal, two-year milestones, one-year milestone. You don't map the whole way. Then you map what happens in nine months, what happens in six, what happens in three, those milestones. And then that first three months, you chart the actions. The rest, stuff changes by putting out the intention. You meet people, you learn things, you get insights you never could have dreamed. Coincidences happen. So you, you, the leading, the, the masculine energy comes in setting the intention, taking the first action. You don't just put out a dream, I want this, I want to manifest this, and say, okay, come to me. No, there's specific things that you can do, you know you can do. But then you need to lead, you need to follow. You need to sit back and the universe is leading. So you look for the cues because the path will often not be where you where you thought. You have to be willing to say, notice where it is. And one of the interesting things with, with dance, when you, when you get more advanced, is if I want someone to turn, a simple lead for a turn in salsa is to put the, the follows hand up like this and they know to turn that way. But if I want them to do a double or triple, what I'll do is I not only put the hand up, but I will move them forward the wrong way. And people who aren't experienced dancers will turn this way. An experienced follower will use that to brace them themselves as a spring and then turn and go into the triple or double. The thing is, sometimes in life, the lead is not where we think we want to go, but it goes into kaka. But what that does is it lets us build momentum to springboard into where we want to go. So if things aren't working out, it doesn't mean that's that's what it is. That that means just means it's letting you build up that momentum to really go where you want to go. So that's my little bit of dance stuff here. Uh, yeah. So what I you know I, I I just like to ask you guys now these things that we've shared are there any thoughts that these bring up that and we'll come back to denise's 
comment. We have already touched on it, but uh, and also Denise, if you there, jot down any other thoughts if you'd like to join in the conversation. Would love to bring you in by video, but we can only do four at this time. Uh, so, are there any thoughts you guys have had from the the points we brought up? I, well, I I'll actually jump do. in. I, I, love your, <laughs> <laughs> I love your comment about the that the the muck and mire uh what you called it the cucka of life um you know when we think we're going into something that's horrible it can actually springboard us into where we're really meant to go and into a direction that's good for us it's like being in that space i've never thought of it like that so i'm i'm gonna go hmm, process that but i there's there's something really good there i really like that um and then i also like what you said about um and this should be a photo me. <laughs> you know, the universe is like a dance. Sometimes you lead and sometimes you follow. That's beautiful because that's, you know, we're co-creators. You know, sometimes we, we intuit and we follow, you know, our higher self. And other times we're manifesting we're, you know, or we're co-creating. So, yes, yeah, sometimes we lead and sometimes we follow. So I love both of those. I love how um, Martin talked about um, Apollo that was on course only 3% of the time and 97% readjusting. And I love that. I have not never heard this. And it's it's brilliant because that's exactly what it is in life where we, we have a target and yet we're kind of taking all kinds of routes and then we're trying things out. And, and I think that I, I would go even further and say that if we don't go these side routes, we might not even get there. We might not even have what it takes to get there and we get stuck. Because even if you're in the middle lane and you don't do anything, you're in the right path. If you just sit there, you can get run over. So, so you, have to, you have to take these side routes. You have to go out to the little side streets and then come back to your path eventually. And that's, that's how you get all the stuff that you will need. It's like going to, um, in a video game, going to get the coins, you know, and, and go into each room to get the coins, to get the building lives and stuff just until you get to your last destination, right? So I, I don't know that we could actually get to the point if, if we were just to follow a strict path because we would not get all these learnings. I really well, like that. How hard would that be? <laughs> just going straight. And honestly, I don't think it's a goal that's really important in the end, is it? It's the, the yeah, journey to the get there. Journey. There is no there. That, that's one thing that I very often say. People say, well, I will get there. No, you are there. There is no there. It's, it's just today. And, and there is no waiting for this to happen. Or it, it doesn't, there, it, there is no there. It's, right. it's right now. It's, it's the journey. We're happy today. We don't have to wait until we get this or till we have this title or this diploma or this whatever it is. We're yep. there. So, Martin, you were going to say something, and then Denise has come with another comment that I'll add it show yes. pop up after that. So, Mark, uh, I think we are praying to the wrong gods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, in, in, I think the, the old Greek had it so beautifully. They had two gods for time. They had Kronos, mm -hmm. which we pray to heavily now. We all want everything chronological. And if you take that word just apart, I mean, I love it. Yeah? It's chronological. It has to all be in succession, all in order. We don't have time. We, are, we can measure everything, but we don't know the value of anything. And, but the other one is Kairos. Uh, um, and Kairos is the god of the quality of the time, hmm. not of the flow of time. So in, in, if the universe is actually at, as what some perceive as unwilling to grant us our wishes, and Ravi and I had already lengthy explorations on that topic. Um, so, well, of course not. It's, the universe doesn't care. It's, it's benevolent in every way and form, but maybe it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're just moving forward in time against obstacles, but the quality of the time is not the right one. So what, what I'm trying to do is 
is to be also well. I'm I'm Mr. Control. Yeah, I I, I have a background in marketing and uh, in, in in management and <laughs> economics and and controlling and bookkeeping and all that. Besides my my studies of Buddhist philosophy, um, but what I'm trying to be more and more aware of. Okay, what what is my intuition saying? What is the right time for right now? Mm-hmm. And not just pushing against the wall, but waiting until the wall opens and suddenly. You know, we run against sliding doors that are closed and they're blocked. So, and, and we keep running yeah. against them. And suddenly, at one point in time, when the time is right, they will just like make, and they are open, and we will walk through gracefully and without any effort. Well, maybe offline we'll have a chat about quantum corner dynamics sometime. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, it's it's that being open. And I want to come to Denise's comment, but maybe to lead into it, I want to share the story of how I connected with Denise. Um, is so I found I've been doing this work 26 years now and I've found, you know, and I've worked in mar- it's funny the coincidence I've done a lot of work in marketing as well. And I've found that there's been a one-to-one correlation in the 26 years that it has nothing to do with my marketing. You know, I've done some, honestly, what people have said is brilliant marketing that has got results that's so pathetically sucky. It's not possible. And <laughs> Then when I get, when I'm on, when I'm focused, the phone just rings. And this thing, how I met Denise is exactly that. Like I had done a lot of personal work, clear, you know, things had been really in this. Ugh. And I just cleared myself. I got this phone call from the company Denise worked with at that time. Uh, it's an, a multinational pharmaceutical company based in Kansas. And the guy knew he needed to work with me. He could not remember how he heard about me, but he knew he needed me. And a week later, I'm in Amsterdam working with their executive team. It's like, what could I have done to create that? I mean, he literally could not remember where he heard, but he knew he had to have me. It's like, so what Denise said is, when she's teaching guitar, she's given half an hour to be intentional to be uh, with teaching chords, strum patterns, and teach a new song, provide feedback, encourage, motivate, and help that student be successful. It's amazing what you can accomplish in 30 minutes with intentionalities with what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and yet, when I'm more intentional about the child's journey and meeting them when they're at versus me pla- planning, my planning, which is to me says a dance there. Sorry. Uh, it's deep. It's a deeper learning experience. Right. So thoughts on that. I have uh, recently just started to um, look into uh, time um, and, and comparing Newton time and Einstein time and how interesting it is. And, and I'm sure that you are familiar with their work. So in Newton time, Um, in a nutshell, is 24 hours a day, one minute equals one minute, and and it is what it is. So we all go through time, and it's equal for for everybody, and there's 24 hours in a day, and that you're stuck with that, and you can't control that. And what Einstein says is that there is no such thing. We are time, and then we can make time what we want it to be. For example, when you spend you haven't seen a friend for years and then you you are in a coffee shop with them exchanging and all of a sudden it's been three hours and, and it felt like five minutes because time is a feeling. And yet the reverse is true. If your daughter calls you and says, mom, I'm in trouble, help me. And then the line cuts and then you try to call back and then and you can't get through. And, and finally, six minutes later, she calls you back. These six minutes, Felt like an hour and and we can we can control how we want time to feel and what Einstein is saying is you can actually make time feel longer so that you get more done during that time or you can ex- stretch it and extend it how you want because we are time I, I'm really really interested into uh, learning more about this I think it's brilliant well and also just a quick note th- normally people think cause comes before effect but with quantum electrodynamics you can actually have the effect happening before the causal and Mm -hmm. so 
you know that 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 it's it it it's you know people who are used to Newtonian thinking or trained in traditional thinking. I mean, they they just have a brain fart. The brain explodes. Uh, but it's it's absolutely mathematically possible. So uh, Can I speak to that too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, what uh, Natalie was saying, I really love that. To me, that also translates as a creative person. It translates to those moments when I'm in flow. Um, and uh, so, you know, I'm just in the creative process and, you know, I could be working for hours and I, I don't feel it. I'm not tired, you know, just because I'm in that moment. It feels like there is no time. And, and I um, some, not every time, but sometimes when I meditate, I hit that spot where time seems to not exist anymore. I'm just in this moment. I, I don't know, it just stretches out forever. And those, you know, I don't want to chase that feeling or those emotions, but when I land there, oh my God, <laughs> that is a wonderful place to be. And that's actually where I feel most connected to what is joy and um, presence and connection to the divine, to myself, to other people, that kind of thing. I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Good, good luck chasing them. Yeah. Martin, <laughs> no, I'm not chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Martin, you want to have some thoughts? <laughs> no, I, I, I love that, what, what, Nat, what Natalie said, Natalie from, well, both Natalies anyway, but about, about chasing flow, exactly. You cannot chase them, but they, they attack you when you don't pay attention. Yeah, and when when you happen to be in that space, and then I love that about the comedy, co uh, the comedy, the, the comment of of Denise. Uh, I think this is a beautiful example: tuning in to what is actually there, what is present, what is what is wanting to be seen right now, uh, and mm -hmm. to to embrace that, not being rigidly stuck in what I have planned, and and but have the leeway, have the have the opening, and suddenly a such much deeper experience that connects us even more to what who we are and what we are and to the other person so instead of instead of a me teaches you uh, uh, there's a we moment created and yeah. and this is this is exactly where where it gets it gets so beautiful and i mean i don't want to i i well okay i am sounding like a broken record i don't care <laughs> but what you're talking <laughs> about natalie and what denise is talking about to me it's it comes back to it, it really is like dance it's that you know people dance is a mindfulness practice for me and people look at me strangely when i say that about doing a diet you know if i'm doing a crazy fast salsa how can that be mindful because i'm totally pre i have to be totally present with my partner with my music to uh, to to co-create and the the thing is what she's talking about is being present with them versus trying to bring in okay I'm going to do this and anal eyes your way through to be present with the flow and that to me is what there's a co-creation there that's happening there that happens in dance that happens in those moments instead of saying I'm going to do this because this moment is here what's emerging in the moment that's that's Ask, asking you to move forward. Wow. I really like that. And it goes back to what Natalie was saying earlier. And I, I'm not sure, I think she said fellowship. Um, we, we set our intentions kind of before here. And what Denise was saying is that, you know, things like for me, I said, and, um, Natalie said fellowship, um, you said joy. Um, if you put all of those together, it's almost just what Denise was experiencing when she was connecting with that child is that, like you said, instead of following a process, um, she connected to the energy of the person in front of her and they co-created an experience together that it was actually much more uh, fulfilling for the student and for her. So mm -hmm. I have this experience when I, that's how I actually teach the Reiki release method is I you have a few processes, but the processes is only to get them to the point where they can let go of a process and then just be present for the person so they can feel the energy and they can help them shift the emotion and the beliefs. But, you know, we, we start with a process just so they get comfortable, but then you throw the process out the door. And obviously, Denise has had a lot of experience with the process of teaching, but she's now confident enough that she can just let that go and then just be really present to the student and their needs in the moment. And I, and I think that's the deepest kind of connection. That's what I'm wanting more in my life with the people that I love and the people that I meet. 
So what's emerging here? Let me ask you guys. Um, it's, we'll start with Martin, Martin and move through. Um, what's the connection between living intentionally and being present? Because, you know, living intentionally in a weird way suggests not being present because you're thinking about where you want to be, thinking out ahead. Uh, so what what do you see as the connection between, because that's what we're talking about here. There's a lot of being present here. How does being present connect with living intentionally for something that you want to bring forth? Martin. That's a very good question. And I'm, I'm not sure I, I've, I've thought it fully through in those uh, three seconds that you gave me now. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> awesome. Uh, no, but just be present with it and see what my, emerges. <laughs> my, my immediate impulse is that it's about the connection between the ego and the heart space heart space meaning the greater all so that they are not fighting against each other but they are co-creating they're coming to a place where some people say oh the ego is is it's to be it's to be abolished it's 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 totally bad and so on but we have it for a reason and it's there it's there to serve a purpose but i think it makes a lousy master but it, it if we want to call it in and do some rational thinking and some processing and, and some, you know, the ego is fantastic in creating scenarios and, and, and putting stuff together. But very often we don't need that. Very often we, we actually should be coming from this space of connection and from within. And, and so I think the intention helps us to realize, okay, is that what we're doing right now? Is it really satisfactory? Is it really connecting us? It is really is it leading us to, a, to an experience that we actually want to have. So and to make this conscious and, and because this helps us become aware of all the subconscious blocks, all the patterns that we are running that might not be serving that. Uh, and and I experienced that with myself again when I when I you know the, this this ton of bricks that hits you when you can when you unearth one of the patterns that you have, have run your life all, your all the time, and you didn't even realize. And suddenly you go, oh, duh, that's why that happened. And that's why that, you know, the, then you can see the red, the red thread going through everything that you have experienced in your life. And so I think for that, we need, we need to set intention. For that, we need the ego. For that, we need to the rational ability. But then we realize, okay, this is not a ruling body of our life, but actually there's something more. There's something more that we can connect to. That, that space in the moment that creates connection between you and me. And I think that is exactly when you said about uh, uh, Natalie and you about, about the practice. And, and I think that's exactly the case because if we were able to fall right into the flow and release everything and just surrender to the flow of everything, we'd have everything available that we would need right now. But we are not ready to do that. So therefore, we need to go out and practice and practice and practice and practice. And by practicing, you allowing, uh, and, and I believe you can confirm that from, from the field of dance, by practicing a lot, then you can allow yourself to go beyond the practice pattern and release it and, and open it up. And suddenly then, you let every inhibition, every every thought of is it right or wrong or whatever, you let that fall away and just be be there fully present and be there. Allow yourself to be immersed with universal energy, God spirit, whatever you want to call it. And then you go from there and then the, the result that comes from there is just 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 magnificent. No, I don't hear you, Ravi. Oh. Ravi, we can't hear you. I had muted myself, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Uh, so, Natalie, your take on this, on living intentionally versus um, uh, Presence. presence or, or and how do they connect and work together? So, I think that in order to be present and how to connect it, we need to redefine what is the intention. And 
very often the mistake that people make is that their goal, what it is they're, that they're aiming for, um, is too often a thing as opposed to be a feeling. Mm -hmm. So people aim for a title or for a moment for a state, uh, not a state, for a situation, for let's say um, I help people with their relationship, fix their marriage, I help I help um, ladies um, uh, becoming pregnant because they had been trying and, and it was just a mental blockage. Uh, I've helped uh, people advance their career. I've helped different type of, of situation. And, and very often the goal is, is a thing. It's when I hold my baby or it's when I have this position or when I have this big million dollar mansion and when I have the two Teslas in my driveway. My driveway. And because the goal is a thing, it's not a real intention because the real intention is being happy as a family when I hold my baby. It's a feeling. So if you redefine the intention as, as an internal feeling, you can leave my office or my Zoom call with your goal already in hands because you are able to feel confident or happy or because you can control your emotion. So if your goal is an intention and it's a feeling, then you can always have it in the present with you as opposed to be something that you will get when you get there, when there is no there. Because you can be happy today, right now. You can be confident right now. And and even if I do help people, um, I have 11 books, so so many different topics. Think yourself wealthy, think yourself thin, think yourself successful, think yourself a relationship pro. So if somebody wants to be thin and they weigh 300 pounds, they don't have the goal when they leave my office in the first session. And it doesn't matter because what they want to be thin for is to get that feeling of confidence that that they're worthy or that they're protected or that whatever it is. So if you find really what is the intention behind your intention, really, what is it going to do for you? Then you can more likely <coughs> today, right now, in the present. Is that, is that making sense? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's funny when, when you talked, about, I, I chuckled when you said about getting the pre, someone pregnant because there's one of my clients, she's an executive that, she, oh my God, she's such an amazing manifester and and you know this is the thing i i keep asking thinking why the heck do you want to keep working every year we work right to set the vision it, because she just does it like clockwork and it's it's hilarious like a few years ago she put in you know we created that five-year vision and three-year plan and she had this pregnancy at this she got pregnant right on schedule it's, it's like i mean this woman is incredible <laughs> at manifesting Anyway, so living intentionally and presence. N Natalie, your thoughts okay. on that. So living intentionally to me means living according to my what I value most in life. And um, so part of that, in order to do that, you know, first I have to decide what do I value most. And um, a long time ago, I was listening to a podcast. I want to say it was like 10 years ago. And, they, and the speaker, I wish I remembered her name so I could give her credit, I, but I don't. But the speaker um, suggested that we create an acronym of like three letters or four and with, with uh, individual words that would represent things that we value most and that we want to be um, you know, living in our life. And so for me at the time I created, my acronym was JAWS, sounds kind of scary, but it's for all good things. Um, it was for joy, art, walking, and spirit. Now all I did is I set that as an intention, but why I liked that ex exercise is it helped me be mindful about my life and whether I was actually living according to my values and my intentions. Because when I, what I was started doing is I started, I'd get requests to head up a committee or an organization or, or whatever, or do things because you get good at things and then people want you to do more of them. <laughs> well, just because I'm good at it doesn't mean I should be doing all of those things. So what I started doing is I used that acronym as a filter. So um, if I got a request, I'd say, hmm, doesn't it bring me joy? Is there any walking involved? Um, is there a spirit connection? Or is there anything creative about it? Um, and if the answer, if it didn't have any of those, then I just said, no, it's not my, <laughs> it's not my bucket. 
and uh, and I gave it back. Um, and uh, so then what I did is I started being a lot happier because then I, when I accepted things, um, so to give you a concrete example, um, I was asked to you know chair the American Cancer Society because at one time I had chaired it, um, the American Heart Association. Um, so I passed that opportunity by, and instead I was asked to um, create a newsletter for my local art association, which I was a member. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Because it had all of the things, <laughs> it brings me joy, there's art in it, and there's spirit in it for me. And um, and I had a ball doing it. So instead, while I was working on that, I wasn't feeling too tired and depleted because I was doing something that was completely in alignment with what I value. And to me, that's living intentionally, but I can only do, so presence to me means mindfulness. So you know, being mindful in my life um, about the people, the experiences, the, the things that I'm doing um, to make sure that they are in alignment with my values. So to me, that's what how what presence means to me. It means mindfulness. And that's for me as well. That's the that's absolutely what presence and mindfulness are synonymous. For me, I think the connection is living intentionally. Yes, you have to step out of the moment to create your vision and get excited about it. Blah, blah, blah. And then you let it go and you live the journey, which is right now. Um, and I think part of it goes back to something Natalie said near the beginning, is that people tend to focus on where they are. Um, and, and, and it doesn't matter. Um, what your vision is if you're focused on god i hate where i am i hate this i get i don't like this that's what's going to dominate that's what's going to go out and and I, I i had um i i thought this would uh come in there's a a, a quote by uh abraham hicks that i shared a little while ago on instagram that came up and said the reason you want every single thing that you want is because you think you will feel really good when you get there but if you don't feel really good on your way to there, you can't get there. You have to be satisfied with what is while you're reaching for more. And I think people are trying to get away from where they are. And I think the key to manifesting any vision, I keep looking up at my vision there, uh, is to be present. And if there's some caca there, some stuff that you're uncomfortable with, it's to be present with it and work through it to understand what's there. Like so many people are focused on, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, but they don't look at how much they've created in their lives. They don't, they're just looking at what, you know, it is compared to what they don't have. They, you know, it's it's the, it's the um, focusing on what isn't versus what is. And I think one of the opportunities in presence is not just these amazing, joyful, blissful moments. It's to say, oh, I'm really feeling gooky in technical term, in this present moment. What's going on here? Uh, how do I, where's the heart of this? What's, what's, and to do that work that we need to, to heal that so we can be at peace with where we are. And, you know, the, it'll be, when other stuff manifests, cool. But it's how do we get at peace where we are and understand how it's contributing. It's always contributing to us. Um, we don't, it doesn't, it's not logical. Um, I mean, Natalie, you studied NLP, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things that they found years ago in the early days of NLP, a lot of therapists got together and they found there was a very common problem with women in their 20s and, and late teens was putting on a lot of weight and trying diets and this on. And so they found that the root issue was not the food, it was that at that age, they started going out and they started getting hit on by guys uh, and they didn't know how to handle it. And your unconscious mind is like a five-year-old kid. It never grows up. And it was freaking out. It's like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. So, it's, you know, like five-year-old kid comes up with a crazy solution. I gotta be less attractive, so I'll put on weight. So it's trying to help them. And so there's there's a positive intention to that, and every time they were dieting, they were fighting their their unconscious mind, and and so what the therapist found was that if they help these women get better coping strategies for the guys hitting on them, all of a sudden the weight became a non-issue, 
And so instead of fighting the stuff that's there, say, okay, how am I trying to help myself? And it's sometimes hard. And it, you may need help digging to uncover what's called a secondary gain uh, of how you're benefiting from where you are until you can come to peace with where you are. And I think that's where the one of the real opportunities and presence is. So... Folks, maybe if we start to pull things together, is there any, um, you know, from this conversation, is there any last, um, you know, we started with a nugget. Is there any last nugget you'd suggest for people and also share with them uh, what you, how people can get in touch with you, what website and so on uh, to, if they, if they'd like to find out more information. So if you'd like to share a nugget and then, um, let us know how we can uh, get a hold of you. Martin, you want to? Well, I want to tie in on what, what you just said about secondary gain. Secondary gain is a beast. Uh, that is in, in you know, I, I work with energy psychology techniques like the tapping or the, the TAT where to, to release blocks and stuff. And that is a huge, huge issue. So if, if people can find out about their secondary gain, they will see their life take a entirely different turn in an area that they really would like to see that turn so so exploring that i think is a is a great great advice and, and a great piece of piece of wisdom because the subconscious patterns they are i always say that we are sitting in a rowboat and we have the two oars of our consciousness and we're rowing and that's nice and fine but then there's a 200 horsepower out engine on the back pushing us 24 seven all the constantly. And that's our power of our subconscious. And if we are trying to row it with our oars against this, uh, where will we get? Nowhere. So if we learn how to use those actually to control the way where we are going, suddenly we are moving effortlessly in the direction of actually what we are wanting or what is, what I like to call what is our with everyone around. And you just go through life and you say like, oh, wow, where did that come from? How beautiful is that? And so that's what I wish for everyone and uh, find these nasty secondary games. Yes. And how can people uh, track you down on the net? And oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, I'm everywhere, basically. Just find me. My website is, is uh, martinlashkolnik.at uh, and you can, you can find it. But just Google me or, or check YouTube. There are several, lots of full full talks on there on energy psychology, on all sort of stuff that might come useful. And so, and if anyone has a question, feel free to reach out. I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you. And Natalie. Um, I love what Martin just said about the the rowboat and then the super powerful engine. I do um, a lot of work with children in schools. And um, I use a similar analogy of the ant working and plugging away little step by little step, bringing food to the colony and trying to do everything right. And then sometimes you're working towards your goal and you feel like you're going further and further away. You're never getting there. You still live paycheck to paycheck. It's just not working. It's because sometimes the ant is standing on top of an elephant and the elephant is walking in the opposite direction. And, and I always ask the kids, so do you think the ant should step off the elephant? And then they're like, yeah. And they're like, no. What if the ant would talk to the elephant instead and say, hey, bud, can you turn around for me and we'll go there? And then instead of being there in five years, that little ant steps, in two steps, the elephant's going to get there. And, and it's going to be so easier, so much easier. And, and what Natalie said earlier about when I do something that I love, I'm not feeling tired or depleted because I, I just love it. So make sure that in your intention, in your purpose, in your goal, it is that dream, that thing that you really want to do, that thing that's on the back burner that, that you've put aside because, because life got in the way. Well, life doesn't get in the way. You only have one. That's the one you've got right now. So it's not going to go anywhere. Even if you bury your dream, even if you put it on the back burner, it's going to come back to you. It's always going to be there because that's your purpose. And that's what Ravi teaches. You live with your purpose. That, that's what you were put on this earth to do and to be. You can't get away from your dreams. They're always going to be there. So you might as well start going at them. And that's not going to go anywhere. So start living your dream. 
And if and if you feel like you're ah, you're working hard and you're not loving it, you're in the wrong path. Like if it's not if the door doesn't open, it's not your door. Find a door where where the door is going to be open for you and and find your door and find build keep going keep going because it's it's your life that's all you've got that's the only reason you are on this earth like keep going keep going so people can reach me at the um, thinkyourself.com thinkyourself.com uh, I'm on social media as well on Instagram on Facebook on LinkedIn Twitter. Um, either Natalie Clement or Thomas or Think Yourself or DNA as well. The DNA system is a three-step system I created to uh, get rid of, um, of self-sabotage. So if you do sometimes the reverse of what you know you should be doing, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. And Natalie, yes. So, um, well, I wanted to go back to a little bit, kind of tie in uh, – it was something Martin said that made me think um, where, oh, and, and, and Natalie actually kind of, you both tied into the whole thing about how our subconscious is, you know, running the show and our, you know, our um, just a tiny, you know, tiny piece, you know. Um, and in the work that I do in the Reiki release method, what I've found and what I, you know, what I've learned to teach people is that, you know, the power of free will, you know, we were created as the image of the divine, which that means we have all the power of creation and free will. So when it comes to healing, we cannot heal someone and unless they are completely on board, you know, with that, that engine and the oars, they're all going in the same place. The ant and the elephant, they're all going in the same place. So as energy healers, we, uh, you know, as me, as a highly empathic person, I can sense when someone shows up saying, I want to be healed, but I can sense when there's some aspects of them that aren't in alignment with that. I call those that resistance. And I've found like there's eight types of resistance and different strategies for uh -huh, moving around them or getting the person on board or kind of deflating it or shifting it. We, it needs to be shifted you know, because resistance is there to protect the person. You know, nothing we do is, you know, to make ourselves tr truly miserable, although we feel that that's it. Um, a lot of our, coping mechanisms are here to protect us and when we can look at it that way we can when we can look at those things in a much more kindly compassionate way then we can truly make big gains and um and healing ourselves and for our healers helping others to to heal and shift their stuff um yeah so that's the kind of stuff that excites me is helping other people do that for myself, everything that I teach, I very much practice. They say you teach what you most want to learn. That's me, <laughs> you, know, you know. So, um, so I'm also learning as I go. So, anything I'm talking about today is what I've learned so far, and hopefully, there'll be new things that I'll be discovering and teaching in the future. Um, if people are interested in learning more about me, they can find me at the wisdomwithin.co. That's my website. I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> all those great places. But Probably the best place is my website and Facebook. Thanks. Okay. Thanks so much for letting me be here. It was a blast. Thank you. And for me, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll build on what Natalie said in terms of what's my journey like lately is I, I've been, what I'm focusing now is letting go of the vision, actually, and based on the concept that the outer world is only a reflection of who we are and where we are. And rather than trying to do things in the outer world, it's about healing inside. So how can I receive all of me with ease? And so my focus has been really to focus internally and say, where am I feeling, you know, the, the stuff that's not working. I'm finding, you know, there's loads of things that, that come easily for me when, when, when I create, but then there's others that, that uh, that 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 are a little tighter. So instead of focusing out there, I'm just going inside and going, what's happening here? Where am I not uh, receiving myself? Where am I judging myself? Where have I um, created uh, limiting beliefs or, or judgments within myself that are blocking me? And as I free that, the outer world shifts as well. And it's. Uh, so it's really to me the nugget is if 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 you want what I'm exploring right now for living intentionally is how can my intention is, how can I receive all of me with these and, and open to that flow. And, and, and that's a really 
cool journey to start on and I don't think you ever finish it so the outer stuff is just you know it's, it's it just shows you know what you have to learn inside or work, work on inside it's it's something there to help you the good the bad ugly outside there is to help you see what you can focus on build on here and for me again i'm on all the social media as well uh ravi tangri is, is pretty easy to find uh and also my website is metia.com m-e-h the number two and then y-e-a-h.com so Folks, I really want to thank you all for being part of this. This was an absolute blast. It was. <laughs> it was, indeed. Truly enjoyed it. And everyone watching, have uh, an amazing uh, rest of the week and weekend. And if you've got any questions, if you're listening after it's live, drop them down in the comments. And, you know, all of us are linked to the uh the broadcast so we we can certainly pop in and respond to you uh in the comments and let us know if you'd like to see more of this sort of uh of show we will talk to you soon have an amazing time thank you everyone thank you Bye -bye.